Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're making camembert with milk from Made by Cow, which is a cold pressed raw milk. So it's a fantastic curd. So let's go and see how we make camembert. <laughs> So this is going to be a camembert style cheese. It's not going to be the same as Camembert de Normandy, which is the official AOC uh, French cheese. It is my take on that cheese. So we'll be using the traditional process of putting it into hoops, making sure that it's got a bloomy rind, and uh, it should be very delicious, especially when we're using this milk by made by cow. Anyway, let's go and see how we make Camembert. So don't forget to sanitise your equipment. It's the first thing I do when I make my cheese. Stainless steel, all that stuff. I boil that for at least 15 minutes. So there's all the gear and all the ingredients lay, laid down, ready to go, including that lovely milk by cow. So the ingredients for this cheese, for the traditional Normandy camembert, is 4 litres or 4 quarts of raw cow's milk. 1 eighth of a teaspoon of Floridanica, 1 sixteenth of a teaspoon of Penicillium Candidum, 1 thirty second of a teaspoon of Geotrichum Candidum, and 1 eighth of a teaspoon of single strength rennet. I'm also using in this recipe a 18% saturated brine. So just uh, keep pouring the milk in, and I'm just whisking that to make sure that the milk is uh, the cream is distributed through it evenly now heat the milk up to 30 degrees celsius or 86 degrees fahrenheit so once you've reached the target temperature i just take my pot off the little steamer i've got there so it doesn't heat up any further And give it a quick stir to mix the cream back in again. The first ingredient we're going to add is the Floridanica, which is an aromatic mesophilic starter culture, and it provides a creamy texture in the cheese. It also promotes buttery notes in the cheese as well. Okay, once you've got that out of the spoon, I'm uh, putting in the Penicillium Candidum. Just sprinkle that over the top. And then add the Geotrichum Candidum. Now just let that rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later, just going to give the milk a quick stir just to make sure that the cultures and the moulds are evenly distributed through the milk. Okay, that should be enough. Now we're going to add the rennet. There's no ripening time for camembert to add the rennet straight in after the, uh, they've been stirred through. Now make sure you stir for no more than one minute or the coagulation will start. Okay, pop the lid on and allow it to set and ripen for 90 minutes or one and a half hours. So your milk should be set now. I'm going to check for a clean break and what we do is put a knife in at a 45 degree angle and then twist it and then look bring it up and if you can see a clean line on both sides then it's ready to cut so cut the curds into 2.5 centimeter or one inch columns there are no horizontal cuts for this cheese okay so allow the curds to heal for five minutes so we're taking it over to the sink area and using a skimmer, I'm going to fill four camembert baskets with the curds. So 
Let's fill them all up one by one. Now, not all the curds will fit in the first time around, so you're going to have to wait a little bit. Just fill them up as much as you can without them spilling out everywhere. So about 30 minutes later, just to refill them again, as they've shrunk down a little bit. Now, you still won't probably get them all in, so 30 minutes later, just add a little bit more. So this should have used most of the curds up, or all of them. I'm scraping the bottom of the pot there. Okay, after another 30 minutes, we're going to flip the baskets every two hours for six hours. Just put a mat on top, and then turn it over, and let it rest in place. Don't touch the mould, don't lift it up, or all your curds will come streaming out. And one more, there we go. So by flipping them this, this early, you're actually forming the rind on the top of the cheese as well, which is what we're after. So flip them over, this is at the two hour mark. So if you need to, just bang them down and they'll settle down to the bottom of the mould. So they're shrinking all the time. There's a lot of whey being discharged out of the cheese during this process. And this is what you need to do before you certainly unmould them because they will bulge and flatten if you don't do this flipping process. So after the final flip, leave the cheese or the curds to settle overnight in their moulds. Now, after a little while, I put the mats back on top just to keep any beasties out. So now the next day, we're going to flip every six hours for 24 hours. So I just uh, pull them out of the moulds there so they get a nice even rind all the way around. There we go. So we do that for a day. So after they're finished, they should hold their form now. They've shrunk down about two-thirds of the way down the mould, and they're very firm. So now we're going to brine them for three hours to salt the cheese. Now halfway through, we're going to flip them over, but before we do, we're going to sprinkle salt on the exposed surface of the cheese. And they should float proud if you've got an 18% brine solution. Okay, so after the three hours, we're going to put them into a ripening box. So two per box. I find that it gives it adequate space for the white mould to grow around the cheese evenly. So we're going to ripen at 7 to 10 degrees Celsius, which is 44 to 50 Fahrenheit at 90% relative humidity, and that's until it gets a white mould all over the cheese. Now turn them daily to make sure that they grow an even cover until they're ready to wrap. So after about a week, you'll see the bloom, the initial bloom, you can see the white mould there. And then on the other pair of cheeses there. So, absolutely essential to make sure that you're turning them every day. So after two weeks, you can see that there is a mould coverage all over. So that's perfect. 
and ready to wrap the cheese. You can see the uh, the mould spores there. Look at the little whiskers, aren't they lovely? So there could have been a little bit more coverage top and bottom, but I was happy with it because the cheese was starting to go a little bit soft. Anyway, this is Kim's version of wrapping a camembert, and I think she's actually done it very, very well there. <laughs> a lot better than what I could do anyway. So we put some little stickers on top so we know what it was and when to taste it. So that was Kim. This is me <laughs> wrapping the cheese. And you know my wrapping skills are legendary on this cheese channel. Maybe not. We'll try again, shall we? There we go. That wasn't quite right. There we go. <laughs> Put a sticker on so we know when to taste it. So we wait about another two weeks. Um, I checked uh, as we're going along by pressing the centre of the cheese to make sure that the firmness had started to go away. So we're going to ripen it 4 degrees Celsius in the kitchen fridge, uh, 39 Fahrenheit, until it is soft. So it's about two weeks, can be as little as one week. Anyway, back to Gav for the taste test. So now it's been a couple of days past the date that I wanted to taste test it. Uh, I wanted to taste test this one on the 7th of November, but it's now the 9th, so two days. So what is it fair? It's soft, very, very soft. Like one of those over-ripened traditional camemberts you get. A little bit dubious upon opening the packet, but anyway, we've got to do it. <laughs> we've got to open it, let it out of its protective wrapper, and see what happens. So here goes nothing. My goodness. This reminds me, and I haven't even got that far yet, of the Le Dolphin, which I did a taste test challenge on. Oh, hang on, let me get that. Oh, here we go. Get that. No, that was a sticker. Come on, get off. Don't want to destroy the cheese. Oh, there we go. Right, all right. Here we go, a bit more. Oh, some of the paper's stuck to the cheese. Oh, no. See if we can get that off. Whew, thankfully, there we go. This is super runny, ladies and gentlemen. And there's a bit of moisture underneath the paper too. I suppose this is what happens when you use raw milk for making camembert. I think it's very overripe. I should have eaten this a week ago. Now, what does it smell like? Let me have a look. It smells all right. It smells fine. There's no off smells or anything. So that's a good thing. Um, hang on, let me use my trusty tea towel. There we go. And hopefully you can see that in the close-up. <sighs> Moment of truth. Let's open it up. I know it's going to ooze, and it's going to ooze everywhere. Oh yeah. Look at that. One, one very oozy camembert. A little bit of, well, the paste is very soft on the inside as well. This is not unlike what I've made before, but this is so creamy and rich. Let me just get rid of that knife, and I'm going to put that there. Now, I've got a spoon for a reason, and that's the tea, because I knew it was going to be runny, right? But somebody once told me that uh, the French usually go looking for the runniest camembert they can possibly get. This would make an absolutely fantastic bait camembert, uh, the one where you cut the top off and you just scoop out the, the insides. I'll tell you what, that is perfection. Let's just try some. Oh, that is amazing. Beautiful, 
well, creaminess, there's a creaminess. You get that um, oh, white mold flavor. It's very hard to describe unless you're actually here eating it with me. Mm. The saltiness is perfect, which is absolutely fantastic. And this paste is just to die for. Oh, this tastes so good. So, you know, I don't think it's a failure, personally. I think this is just amazing, an amazing cheese. Uh, we'll start to be proud, I think. Mmm. Oh, and for those who don't know who Will Stud is, he's the guy that does the the cheese slices series, um, where you can pick that up. Well, just about anywhere. It's on video. It's on. Um, it's all on on demand TV, Apple TV, that sort of stuff. Anyway, I'll tell you what, this is amazing. Now, if I wanted it a little bit less runny, um, then I could have shortened the period of time in the cheese cave. Uh, before I wrapped it, that would fix that up, no problems at all. Also, um, I could have eaten this a week less if I didn't want it runny like this, but this is this is what I was aiming for, traditional camembert from Normandy um, that is, well, it's on the runny side. I'll tell you what. Mmm. Bloody lovely. All right, let's get into this bit of paste that's not... Not so runny, so I've got some crackers here. Let's see what I can get out of this. And a bit of the rind. I want to try some of the rind. Oh, I'm going to have to spoon it on. Oh, there we go. Come here. Come here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad I got to use that raw milk, the cold pressed raw milk for this. I, I, I don't think I would have got this with um, pasteurized homogenized milk. Oh. All right, here he goes. Oh. Mm. oh, that's so good. Where's the tea towel? Mm. That is an amazing cheese. It's not overpowering. Yeah, don't get me wrong. It's just, oh, it's just so good. Some of that centre paste. It's not chalky. It's uh, it's smooth, like a should be. Look, where's another cracker? There we are. Tell you what, I'd serve this up, no problems at all. Even though it looks oozy like this. Oh, so good. Mmm. Mmm. That's beautiful. Mmm. Oh, can't get enough. I don't want to demolish the whole thing. Mmm. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, so that's um, making camembert with raw milk. This one is overripe, as we've seen, but I tell you what, it is absolutely delicious. So when using raw milk, um, I would uh, I would lessen the aging period. So less time in the cheese cave at say seven degrees Celsius, less time in the kitchen fridge, probably a week less, uh, and you'll get a firmer, far firmer. Uh, cheese that is just as delightful, but this one is just amazing. It is up there with La Dolphin, and um, there should be a link to that video um, somewhere up here. But yeah, oozy, absolutely fantastic, classic Normandy Camembert that is um, is at room temperature, and it just tastes fantastic. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, that's how to make a traditional Normandy Normandy Camembert, but not in the AOC way, but this is this is very, very close to, to what you would get. But absolutely fantastic. I'm just delighted with this cheese. Really, really good. Anyway, if you want to try the other type of camembert, then you can check out the Stabilized Paste Bloomy Rind Cheese, which I labelled as fake camembert, if you're more into the firmer style of camembert. 
Anyway, thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.